<laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa D'Amico with the Rockland Arts Festival, and I'm so thrilled about tonight's webinar. This is a first. We are we are collaging like Matisse and we are sculpting like Gillespie, two art legends being led by two fantastically talented artists. We're so glad that Elizabeth Laurie is here and Nikki Pinner here. And um, before we get started, just a couple quick things, I promise. If you have any comments or questions, there's a Q&A button at the bottom. Please click on that and I will relay your questions and comments to the artists. And also, like every webinar we've had during this festival, tonight at the end, we will do a drawing and we have a wonderful giveaway. Um, so stay tuned for that. This is the last week of the festival. So after this evening, there's two more webinars. They're free. Tomorrow night is live from Elmwood Playhouse. And Thursday night is a 2D um, computer animation workshop. So if you're interested, just go to the events calendar at um, rocklandartsfestival.org and register. So I have talked enough. It is time to get going. We're going to start with collaging like Matisse with artist Elizabeth Laurie. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being here and just, just take it away. Oh, good evening, everyone. As Lisa introduced me, I'm Elizabeth Laurie, and tonight we're going to have some fun. Um, uh, some of you are familiar with Matisse. He was a French artist and uh, most of them know them as a painter, but he also did some sculpture. He did some printmaking and towards the end of his life, um, I believe he, I think he had cancer or something. He had like some surgery, so he could not paint anymore. Like he couldn't stand for a long period of time. So that's when he started doing his cutouts, which they're known as collages, you know? Um, I have a book here. I'll show you a few of his, um, that he did. And let's see, it's a big book, so bear with me. Um, let's see. Get some of the samples. Um, okay, here's one. You can see how colorful it looks. He loved colors, so he always used bright colors. And the cutouts, he had uh, his assistants uh, paint um, white paper in different colors. And then once they were dried, he would come with the scissors and cut do his cutouts. Um, um, let me see. So I have, uh, a few samples that I made that you can, you can use if you do have at home. I mean, it can be construction paper. It can be tissue paper. Uh, I'll show you a few tricks. Um, I have tissue paper here. I actually, um, people don't know this, but I use, you know, when you put in the dryer, you know, those linen sheets. Okay. Once it's used, it's very soft. So what you can do is, um, I use a little spray. This is uh, from my makeup, <laughs> so I kept it. We, we recycle everything, artists, we recycle everything. So with water and you can use food coloring, okay? So you put it any color you want, you mix it and you spray your linen and you let it dry. And then you can use it um, with Mod Podge or glue when you wanna create your own, uh, Collages, okay? So that's another material that you can use. I've used tea bags. Once they dry it, I've used tea bags. Um, there's another, if you have napkins, like with parties, we always use napkins, whatever. You have leftover, don't throw them out, save them. What you do is, usually the napkins have like a uh, another paper, okay? You peel that off. I think I already peeled this one off. I think I have one here that it doesn't have. Let's see. Yeah, this still has it. So let me start it. Uh, bear with me a second. So sometimes it's hard to get off. Um, here we go. You peel it off like this. Okay, and you can still save these, okay? You can, again, with the spray, you can color it or you can just use it white. And then here's your tissue, okay? And you can use this also. So don't throw away those napkins, save them. So many things you can do. Um, 
Okay, let me show you some samples. Um, this I took out from the newspaper magazines and uh, I just kind of was playing around with it. So I made this, I'll kind of bring it closer so you can see, okay? And I was, wasn't was thinking, I just kind of figured, oh, this kind of looks cool. So this is one of the samples. Um, this is another one, cute one, that I had some extra pieces already cut and I figured I'd do something like this. Okay, let me see if I, can. okay. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So that's another thing. So never throw out any paper. Um, this one I wanted to show you, okay. This is like a 3D. And in the background, okay, I used um, crepas, uh, you can use crayons, um, markers if you want. So all those paper cuts that you have, don't throw them out. Do your background. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Let me see. Okay, I don't know. The light. Okay, maybe that better. Um, Elizabeth, just pull yeah. it back a little bit. Is yeah. back? Yeah. Is that like better? That. Okay. That's much better. Thank you, Lisa. If you can see it, I have like, I use cray paws and crayons. So I just kind of decorated the background. And then the papers that I had cut, I just made it, you know, I folded it and then it makes it look three dimensional. Okay. So that's another thing that you can do. It doesn't have to be flat. All right. But usually the collages are flat. So this one is more like a Matisse. These are different pieces of paper that I kept. And I said, oh, okay, let me just kind of put it together. And uh, and don't think too much because I believe that when you think too much, it's like the spontaneity gets lost, okay? Elizabeth, so, question. Yeah. When yes. it comes to collage, are, mm -hmm. you, are you cutting in advance and arranging on the paper in advance or are you cutting and, and, and gluing essentially as you go? Um, no, actually I do a lot of cutting. Okay. And, um, once I have enough cu cutting cutouts, then I start putting it together. And then it's a good question because when you cut out, you have what we call positive and negative space. And I'm going to explain what that means. This, it was a, this, let me see if I have it right. Okay. This was a rectangular. So I decided to make a cut free cut. This is my positive and this is my negative. So never throw your negative out. You can use both, okay? When you put it on, on, on your basic, like on your sheet of paper, okay? You can still use it, see? You can use it like this or Hold on to the drops. You can use this one like this and you add more others, okay, cutouts. That's why never throw anything out because you can use both. There's no such thing as wasteful and paper. You can use your positive and negative. So um, if you have construction paper, um, do your cutouts. Try not to use um, a pencil. Draw with your scissors, okay? Hopefully everybody has their scissors. And if you have a glue stick, that's fine. Um, if not, if you have like the other glue, you know, the liquid glue, like Elmer, Elmer's glue, that you can use that too. Usually I prefer to use the glue stick because it's quicker, okay? It dries the other one. It kind of takes longer to dry. So um, if you have all, you, all different colors, go for it, cut any shapes. It can be geometric shapes. It can be like this. Um, I had some other paper and these are like leftovers. I just keep everything. You know, these are all pieces of paper that I had and I don't throw anything out. Okay. So um, I think that's about it. Uh, I don't know what else. Let's see. 
Does anybody else have? Oh, let me just one more thing of uh, of Matisse because he he loved color. Uh, and in, in 1904, 1906, actually, I just saw that exhibit. The Met Metropolitan had exhibit on of Matisse and Andre Andre what's his Durain. They were called the Fauvist. That means wild beast because they use these really colorful uh, paint. So they're, they had reds and orange and yellows. So they said, wow, that's too crazy. But it was an experimentation for both of the artists. And, um, and I think from there, um, if you go, if you go on Wikipedia or you do more research on Henry Matisse, a lot of his paintings are very colorful and very like pattern-like. And you, that uh, experience of his, that's why his collages at the end, if you look at them, they're very pattern-like. Let me see if I can find another one. Um, it reminds me of patterns, you know, like, like on textiles. So yeah, let me show you like here. I don't know if you can see, it's like a pattern. Okay, and it's very, very colorful. So I, for me, that's that what he did in 1906, you know, that kind of carry him on towards the end of his life. Okay, uh, any questions, anybody? Do they have any questions? Okay, Lisa? question. How do you store all of these bits of paper? Good question. Oh, <laughs> that is a good one. I have, I have, Tons of um, uh, little, I buy these at the dollar store, okay? These folders, and then I kind of staple them. And here's, and it says over here, collage paper, okay? That's how I store it. Or if you want, you can have um, also um, the, the dollar store. Get everything at the dollar store. Uh, a gallon bags you can put them in there too, especially the little ones. This, with the folder, I think most of them are the larger pieces, but if I have little ones, then I, I put them in actually, and I store them in little plastic bags so they don't go all over the place. Terrific. Any other questions? That's it. Oh, okay. Is, thank you. I, I feel like I want to end the webinar now so I can go make some collages. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And again, just, just save everything. I mean, for magazines, if you see like a picture of of uh, flowers or water or um oh maybe I didn't show this one I think I showed it to Lisa earlier I was kind of fooling around and um I made this collage I know it says here you can't it was a dream so it was a hand it was jewelry okay and this is uh there was some blinds and then I saw uh this model you know and I cut it out so and the background, I don't know if you, I'll put it closer. Lisa, can it be? Can it you pull it, it back just a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. And then I have like water in the background. So she's kind of flowing down the water there. I don't know if you can see that. You can see it. You can see it? Yes. Okay. Another so, question for you. Okay. What kind of scissor do you prefer to use? And also what kind of glue? Oh, I use any scissor that I have as long as it's sharp. It has to be sharp, okay? Or some on some of the cutouts, I use an X-Acto knife, okay? Um, or you can use, um, if you don't have X-Acto knife, hold on a minute. These are like X-Acto knives too. You can get this at a Home Depot or Lowe's. There's like these um, these blades. Okay, and they sell the blades separately too, if you need to. So you can get something like this. You don't need an exacto knife. Um, and the glue, I prefer, like I mentioned before, this um, because it, it's it's easier to. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's easier to spread, and it and it's quicker. Unless I've done also when I use the tissue paper or the napkin, um, if you have Mod Podge at home, you can use that also, okay? 
but uh, I prefer this. If you have Elmer's glue, the liquid that's very liquidy, that's fine also. It's actually a matter of taste, you know? There's another question um, from mm -hmm. Bonnie. She's curious to know what kind of paper do, or what, what is the base of your collage? What is the surface you're gluing onto? Is that cardboard? Is it more paper? Is there a it, I, whatever I have? I had good. That's a good question, actually, because I use different things. Um, I, you can use cardstock. You can use cardboard. Um, as long as the paper, even watercolor paper, uh, mixed media paper, as long as it it's not thin, because remember you're putting several pieces of paper, okay, and, and it can be different textures. So you want something that's a little sturdy. So you want something that that's, don't use print paper, you know, like you use for printing. You Cardstock is great. Cardboard, you, if you get um, uh, deliveries from Amazon, don't throw away that cardboard. I have tons of cardboard pieces. I use it for everything. You can use that also to, to glue your, your collages. So anything that's, it's a little sturdy surface. Right. That's my recommendation. Yeah. You're saying thickness is kind of key to support yes. everything. It doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be super thick. Uh, because these that I did, it's it's actually cardstock. Uh, this is cardstock. Okay. Uh, but then it depends what I'm putting on it. Like if I'm using um uh like thicker paper or mod podge. Um, I'll, I'll tend to get something that's a little thicker than that. Like they have um, the mixed media paper that they sell, that that's pretty good for, you can use it for that. Great. Okay, that's it. So Elizabeth, thank you so much. This was wonderful. Welcome. And it's so nice doing Matisse and Gillespie because granted their materials and approaches are very different, but they were both masters with color. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait, there, there, something else just popped up. Okay. It's a thank you from the audience. Oh, you're welcome. Enjoy. Have fun. Whatever you got at home, even your kids' stuff, crayons, you know, the glue that they had, the construction paper. Don't throw away those napkins. Use them up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth. So now right. we're, we're switching gears just a little bit. We're going to sculpt like Dorothy Gillespie with artist Nikki Penn. Nikki? Are you with us? Yes. Can you? Okay. Let me move here. Can you see me? Yes. All right. Very good. Um, I'm here in Radford, Virginia, where I live and where I, um, this is my studio. I'm working here. Um, so I live about 30 miles from where Dorothy Gillespie grew up, uh, which is Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, she, in her 70 year career, was faint. Um, she did a lot of paintings, but she also did sculptures using metal. And she was very famous for making these huge sculptures. I wanted to show you in a book basically how she started with very large basic shapes, similar to Matisse. These are painted, though, these aren't cut out. And she moved from flat images to painting on sheets of metal. And then she would cut the metal and she would curl the metal. She went into spirals, lots of color. She went in all directions. And this particular one happens to be the same sort of thing, but done with paper, like we're gonna do, because we can't really use metal in here. All right. I was given by her son a kit that was um, to make it easy. So I hope that you have a kit. We're gonna go ahead and make, make a piece. If you don't have a, a kit, then you can just use construction paper and scissors because that's what's in the kit. Nikki, do you know where they could get the kit if they wanted it? I wish I did. <laughs> you I know what? We're going to have to we're going to have to find out through Jerry. Yes, we'll check it. with the Gillespie Foundation. 
Because, I am so sorry that I can't answer that question. That's not good. The kit is <laughs> wonderful because it's, you know, you can pop it in your bag and do art anywhere. Oh, it really is. I mean, that's a nice little kit. I appreciated it. And so basically what I did was I took what I learned from the kit and these I made myself. I didn't make them from the kit. But it, since the kit comes with Nikki, can you, raise, can you raise your camera up a little bit? Upward. Better? Yes. I think that's good. Much better. Great. Are you seeing my head? <laughs> yeah. We, can, can you we, see can these see. up here? Yes. Good. Good. Um, inside, he already, there are already cut pieces that are similar to the shapes that Dorothy Gillespie used. So I'm just going to kind of show them to you. They're pretty organic, mostly square edged, sharp edged, not so much round, but, but, um, irregular. So if you're going to cut some pieces yourself, you can just go ahead and cut out shapes about as easy as that. I took different colors of these strips of paper and that's just what I did was cut. Can you see when I'm cutting? Yes, I can. Yes. Got it. Okay. Real good. All right. And then luckily they have scissors and a glue stick in there, which I think is really sweet. But otherwise you can just get your own. Okay. When you're gluing this on, make sure that you glue all the way to the edge. Otherwise the paper will just kind of lift up while you're trying to curl it. Okay, so there's a piece. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the edge. Mash it down. Get another one. I don't want to spend too much time doing this. So it's kind of so I'll work as fast as I can. You want to overlap your pieces. She did that a lot. You'll see with this one I didn't overlap. With this one I did. With this one I left it pretty open in different places. Just a lot more negative space. So if you happen to be, if you have anything with you, if you happen to have the materials with you, I hope you're doing this with me. So I'm completely going all the way, covering the whole thing. It makes a big difference. Like this one, I don't think I covered as well. There we go. So it might come back later. I might have to add some more glue to hold it down. Let me get a couple more pieces on here and then I'll go to what I've already worked. You see, I use some of these great big strips in these. I like those. Nikki, I, liked how, yeah, I wasn't yes. sure if you knew, but but here in Rockland County, um, for everyone listening, there's a lot of different locations people can go to to see Dorothy Gillespie's work, an example of what you're doing, but in metal. They can go to the Nyack Library, they can go to Juanio. Um, so she is really a, an American artist. I mean, you can see her work. Yes. You can go across the river to the Rockefeller Gallery and see her, her totems, her outside the gallery. I mean, let me show you a drawing. We have, or not, a, it's a photograph. Um, she was a distinguished professor at Bradford University, which is my hometown here. And she uh, it was 97 to 99. She, she taught at Bradford University, but they also collected her artwork. And one of the pieces that ended up, this is kind of a blurry thing. You can see her right here. That shows you how tall these are. This is Sky Castles uh, that was outside of Radford University. They're relocating this particular sculpture right now, but they have a great deal of, of her artwork here as well. And we've got it pretty much spread out around here, which is lovely. I've had a chance to get to know her artwork very well. 
Okay, so getting an idea that this is, you're just gonna overlap, do a whole bunch of that. So I don't bore you to tears. I wanna show you how I made some sculptures. This one is wrapped around a paper towel tube. Here he is. <laughs> and then I cut that shorter and curled it like the tops of sky castles. This one's also in the shape of sky castles. And I used one sheet to create a triangle shape and taped it together at the back. I can show you how to do that if there's time. And then I took another sheet and I just added undulating pieces like, like I saw in her book and in her artwork. And this is a, an added piece that I made smaller, a smaller triangle and curled it and then set it into the top. And it sits up there pretty, pretty well by itself. Okay. Let's hope this is. Now, when I originally did this piece right here, I took both sheets and I covered both sheets on both sides so that when I was cutting out and curling, you would get some of the color on one side and some on the other. And then I extended it so that it's a larger piece because I used some of the strips going back behind. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm going to suggest. Maybe I'll use this one as the base. So she would cut strips out of metal, which is pretty impressive. And then it was suggested that you roll them. Here we go. I'm gonna roll it on up. And this will shape it. There we go. So now I've got a nice little curl that I can pull out and I can glue over. Let's give it a try. Since I don't have it on both sides. This one I'll have to be a little trickier, but since I've got this orange, I think I'm actually going to pay attention to that and let them work together here a bit. Thank you, Becca, here, buddy. She would bend the pieces with her metal sculptures, she would rivet in these spots. And that's what would hold them together. Let's see if that'll hold. I'm going to use the thing that was actually holding. I'm going to rubber cement. If you have time, you can just stay on there and hold it, or you can. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it for just a minute. Are you going to paper clip it? There you go. See if that'll hold it in place. Getting the idea there. Okay. If it doesn't, we'll put it back. Nikki, it's almost like you're painting with paper and color. Do you know what I mean? It's like it is. It really it is. That's a very beautiful. good way to put it. She had painted them. I wish I could have just painted them. <laughs> this was part of the kit. And I thought that it was a good idea to have these shapes in the kit because it really shows the shapes that she worked with. Um, when Elizabeth was talking about drawing with scissors. That's basically what I'm doing right now. I didn't draw anything. I'm just following the line. I'm creating a line through through cutting. She did more sharp lines. Some curved lines, but most of her stuff was curled around. Let's see. I'm going to curl this one around a little bigger. So there won't be as much of a tight curl on it. See, I've, 
I've gone up the edge of the brush. There we go. I noticed another thing too. Let me show you that. I'm just going to let this one stick on like that. It's really a lot of fun. When I look at the colors, when I'm using the same colors and they're crossing over, I like how they kind of give the illusion that they're that one is moving into another, even though they're on different different um, planes. So she had she used a lot of um, depth just through overlapping and movement. Okay, so we can just keep going from there. I, for this one, the way I extended it, I just went ahead and put, well, I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter. Yes, that's about right. So I can use that piece, and let me cut this, I can use that piece. There we go. So now it's a little more extended. Make a note. That's my little note to say. Cut it shorter. I love being able to explore these shapes and decide how they can interact with one another. I can imagine that's what she did. I wish I could have met her. I wish I could have walked, worked beside her and listened to her talk about what she does. I hope I'm honoring her in this project. And do you have any questions? There, any thoughts? Oh wait, something pop, oh, there's a, th let me take a look. So Nikki, are yeah. you using rubber cement to attach those pieces? Also, are you, are your sheets made from aluminum or tin? She worked with aluminum. My sheets are all just paper right now. And I personally don't work with aluminum with, uh, my sculptures are built with stained glass. So I have a different method from her, but the similarity is we both use large shapes of color that are interacting with depth and interacting by moving. I can't curl stained glass, but I do put it in parts that make it curl around and have to interact with what is not a flat shape. That's a, that's a pretty good challenge. Okay, so I went ahead and added another shape there, which makes this like a, all another shape. I think of, but mostly what she did is she just kept adding strips and strips and strips. I am using the rubber cement. The reason why I'm using the rubber cement is because it holds a little bit better than using the, the glue stick. If I were working flat, the glue stick would work just fine. The gravity's kind of working against me right now. Here we go. I'm going to put that one back on that way. I like that. I hope you can enjoy the color as much as I'm getting to enjoy it up here. You can see how you can just keep going and going. Let me hold that for a minute there and see what it, see how it behaves. So the construction paper that I ended up using is, uh, I think it's called pecan. It's P A C O N, and it's a nice, thick, beautiful, um, color fast construction paper. And I noticed that the kit, the paper that they used, was color on both sides except for they're small pieces with this color on one side and white on the other. And it's a little bit thinner. This is a little bit thicker. What I used here is a little bit thicker as well. Okay. Uh, when it came to doing this, this piece right here, let me go ahead and show you that. We'll just let that continue to just dry for a minute. I decided to fold this into thirds. I happen to make these six inches by, what is it, six by eight? No, six by 10. 
So because they're six inches wide, I'm going to mark every two inches. Look. Look. Nikki, you have a question. Um, yes. Starting the paper you're using, is any of your paper color aid paper? No, but I thought about using that. Could it be I, used? What is that again? Do you think it could be used? Oh, yes. I definitely think it could be used. When I first saw this paper, I thought it was color aid paper, but it's, it's thinner than color aid paper. I think color aid paper would be perfect for this project. If I had been able to get some, I considered it. <laughs> Color aid is gorgeous. I used it a lot in college, but it's kind of expensive. All right. So I, I'm folding one side, trying to give it as good a crease as I can. All right. And now I'm going to fold this part. Folding in the air is kind of tricky, isn't it? I can use this to my table. Having that, um, these layers of paper, they don't fold as easily as thin stuff, but that's also the good thing because it's going to be sturdier. That's what we want. Something that'll stand up on its own. I love the idea of making something 3D with a paper. So playing around with that was pretty important to me. Okay, now this is where I'm just gonna go straight to tape. It seemed like the easiest way to keep this together. <laughs> We're just having fun. Somebody sent you a message, <laughs> they said, thank you. And that yes, colorade paper is expensive. Is, <laughs> is this pecan paper that you're using cheaper than colorade? Yes. Okay. And I used it a lot when I was teaching elementary school because the colors were so bright, the paper was so sturdy that I could depend on it coming through well. And uh, the colors are just, I mean, they're wonderful. They do have different styles uh so they've got some cheaper they've got the more you know you can spend a little bit more for for a nicer paper there we go see now we got a triangle i'm gonna take this and play with my triangle that was pretty nice it said standing up on its own the stuff that i noticed that some of them are kind of showing uh, coming off i'm leaving it I'm, lead, I'm letting it become part of the three-dimensional piece. Okay, so like this side right here, I cut a strip. And then I cut a lot of little strips, nice and thin. I did about, I did four on that one. I wonder if I do five on this. Oh, we're going to stick with four. And then I took a pencil. The pencil is gives a much tighter curl. The other thing that is right there in your kit is the glue stick, which also you can just go ahead and curl around it. So the, the kit gives you everything you need. You really can't just pick it up, go and make. So you can see how something that is small, like a pencil, will make a much tighter curl. Something that, I bet I can make that a little bit tighter, but the, the larger your circle, the more comfortable or relaxed your curl is going to be. Let's see what happens there. Whoop. It's still pretty relaxed, we'll let it be. I'm going to go back to the pencil because I like the idea of having it tight. Let's 
So Nikki, we got a message from Gary Israel, who is the executive director yes. of the oh, yes. Dorothy Gillespie Foundation. And he has made a wonderful offer. I'd like to, this I, is really for the audience. So everyone yeah. in the audience, if you would like to have one of the kits that Nikki is talking about, um, Gary Gillespie will send it to you. So what I'll do is um, I will send after the webinar, I will email everyone in the audience with Gary's email address, send him your postal mailing address, and he, you'll get a kit from Gary. And you can do- Thank you, Gary. That is really generous. Incredibly generous. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and use a piece of tape here. That's great. I'm so glad he was listening. <laughs> so when that very important question was asked and I did not have an answer for him, so glad he was there. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and add that on and let it, I'm using tape for this just to hold it in place. So I did something different on each, each side that added weight, which is going to pull it down until I add some other things. So that is a little closer to what I've seen a lot of her work that just, it attaches at the top. It curls and then attaches again and curls and attaches again on both those sides. All right, how's our time? You want me to keep playing? Oh, we're, no, we're fine. So whenever you're ready to stop, that's that's okay, okay. Nikki. It's up to you. Okay, well, I don't think I'm gonna be that much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I've given you and, this and idea. Yeah. How really how pretty simple it is i what i loved about this kit of this whole idea was this is extremely simple but it's endless in its possibilities of you know just whatever you feel like experimenting with and in the same way that elizabeth's collages you just there's no limitations so and i'm glad that you put matisse and gillespie together i agree with you two masters of color and they use them in different ways. And I think that's beautiful. So oh, thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> Nikki and Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing your time and your talent. And now everyone in the audience will be getting a kit if they want it. And they can go crazy at home with your ideas and adding their own to it as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary. You're sweet. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> So everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's time for the giveaway. We picked one person in the audience at random, and that is, dun, 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 that is Sandy Beach. So Sandy, you have won two passes to Levity Live Comedy Club, and each pass is for two people. So you can bring three of your friends or, or me and the festival committee. <laughs> um, Sandy Beach, just email us your mailing address and we will pop those in the mail to you. Our email address is rocklandarts at gmail.com. And for everyone else, please go to rocklandartsfestival.org. Check out um, the last two webinars of the series. I hope you'll join us again. And again, Elizabeth, mwah, Nikki, mwah, and Gary, thank you so much for everything. This was a wonderful evening. Good night, everyone. You guys have, have a great fun. evening. Have Thank you. Nikki, you did great. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. I you did too. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. <laughs>